Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Wendy Myers. Welcome to the Myers Detox Podcast. You guys can learn more about my work and download tons of free e-guides and run with all types of subjects at myersdetox.com. And today we have a great guest, my friend, Diane Kayser. She's been on the show a few times and she's always really funny and a wealth of knowledge. Today, she's going to be talking about parasite cleansing. And so what parasites are doing to your body the symptoms of parasite cleansing, a lot of really surprising information on the show. And she talks about um, how parasites kind of go hand in hand with heavy metal toxicity and why when you're doing a heavy metal detox, you also be thinking about parasite cleansing because the body naturally allows parasites to proliferate when you have heavy metal toxicity to clean up the toxic mess. So parasites will consume heavy metals and chemicals. So the body's innately intelligent in that way. And she also talks about, you know, the do's and don'ts of parasite cleansing, uh, what you want to do, uh, the right way to do parasite cleansing, and really lots of, lots of interesting information about how, um, you know, how, what parasites look like, uh, what, what different types of parasites um, harbor different molds and viruses and bacteria and Lyme even. And, and why your immune system gets compromised and allows these to proliferate. So tune into the show is really, really, really good. And uh, just a few announcements. I, if you guys haven't tuned in recently, I recently became a naturopathic doctor. So I've been working on that for quite some time. So really, really happy about that. It's something I've really dreamt about since I, you know, I was 10 years old. Uh, that's why I wanted to be a doctor when I grew up. So uh, really thrilled about that. And, uh, and also I just got back from five, uh, five weeks in Argentina. And uh, so that was just a, an unbelievable trip. I've, I love South America and I've always wanted to, to go to Argentina. I've been to Brazil and Peru, but I had never gone to Argentina. So I went everywhere. I went to Buenos Aires and Salta and uh, Mendoza and I uh, went to Ushuaia and the very Southern tip of South America. And then also went to the uh, uh, Perito Marino Glacier uh, as well. And went to Iguazu Falls and just had like an unbelievable, just mind blowing trip. De- definitely did some wine tasting for sure. So Mendoza, you know, Argentina is one of the top wine growing regions in the world. So definitely, uh, partook a little of that and really enjoyed myself. Not a big drinker, but, uh, really enjoyed the wine there. Um, so that's, that's what I have going on. Uh, but wait, let's get back to the show. So parasite cleansing. So with Diane Kayser, So Diane is a soccer player turned functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner, and she's also a courage coach and a holistic beauty expert. And she's been through many health struggles and with empathy empathy and fierce leadership, she's your go-to girl to break through anything. So no matter what you tried or what you've been told. And so as an intuitive healer, she's the author of Killer Breasts, a step-by-step guide to overcoming breast implant illness. And she's also the producer of the Non-Toxic Beauty Summit and creator of Cleanse, Heal, Ignite, a program which helps women use the power of intuition to discover their inner healer by providing them lifelong tools to reverse autoimmune disease, breast implant illness, hormone imbalances, chronic pain, gut infections, emotional trauma, and perfectionism. So her mission is to educate and empower rationally passionate women leaders with safer beauty, body and breast solutions from products and procedures to diet and detox so they can age gracefully and holistically with the energy and vitality they need to step into their power to speak their voice and spark their purpose. So you can learn more about Diane and her work at dianekazer.com. Hi, Diane. Thank you for coming on the show. Hey, Wendy. Thanks for having me again. Yeah. So I wanted to have you come on and, you know, talk a little bit about parasites um, because it's a big problem. Everyone has parasites and people just maybe aren't thinking about that as the cause of their symptoms. So tell me a little bit about, you know, why you, you got so focused on parasites. Yeah. Well, like you, you know, we're both FDNs in our history and years ago, it was probably about nine years ago. Uh, I, the things I started seeing come out of me when I was doing my cleansing protocols and started doing enemas, it, the one came out and then it was kind of a nonstop process, nonstop, nonstop more coming out. And what I noticed is when they were coming out of me, I was feeling a lot better. My skin was clearing up. My hair was thicker. And of course, a lot of people are wondering what to do for this air quotes, anti-aging thing. But then 
there's a question that many people aren't asking is why are all these things happening? And that's what I realized is that parasites do a lot of damage and you'll see some slides that I'm going to present on today. And you'll want to stay to the end because the, if you looked at my, uh, WhatsApp chat with a lot of the members in our group that I'm helping through this cleanse that you're going to learn about today. It's constant every day, little things that they're sharing, like, look at this one, look at this one, look at this one. And then in the ensuing symptom relief and how much better they feel and they look. So it's been such a big part of, um, that missing link that when we finally did it the right way in the right order and with the right herbs and the right foods at the right time, we finally hit this, this breaking point where people are like, I didn't even know I had weight to lose. I didn't even, where, where can these things live? And then the benefits are amazing. So I wanted to share with everybody. Yeah. I love it when clients send you like pictures of their toilet and like what's coming out of them. It's like, it's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> but parasites are, they're a huge issue today, you know, and I think they're a big underlying root cause of people's problems. And uh, tell us a little bit uh, about that. Like why are, are parasites so prevalent? Like which ones are they? Why are yeah. the doctors missing them when people are yeah. coming to them? Yeah, we'll get into all of that. So can I share my screen so you can yes, start getting please. into the slides? Let's okay, great. Yeah, let me open this just one second. And for those of you guys just listening on the audio or on uh, you know Spotify or whatever, uh, we have this video. If you want to check out the video on myrtdocs.com, just search for Diane Kayser. Yes, and you know, both of you and I, have removed our breast implants. Mm -hmm. And this is another big thing is that a lot of women are explanting, but then they're not going after, you know, the bugs that have been living inside of them for such a long time as the implants have been causing a lot of, you know, toxic storm in the body. So yeah, let's get into this. I, I named this one for you, parasite cleansing and energy balancing for Myers detox. So these are the missing links that pair with on um, detox programs. So, um, many of you guys know the amazing work that Wendy does, um, on Myers detox. And of course, there's a lot more to it too. When we're looking at the whole body, there's hundreds of trillions of cells inside of you. And there's a lot of toxins that are now in our environment that we all know that were, I think in the last couple of years, a lot of us have really woken up to the, the, just the sheer amount of poisons that are invisible, but yet surrounding us at all times. So since the 1930s, and you've probably talked a lot about this on your show, hundred thousand plus chemicals, uh, 85,000 pretty much have been like toxins that are, um, in circulation now have been introduced into our lives and of them less than 1% have been tested for safety. There's little regulation on them. And the small handful of chemicals that have been tested were performed by the companies that profit from them. 2000 plus new chemicals are approved every year, but have never been tested for human safety. And I'll get to the connection of parasites after this of that only around 10 are tested for neurotoxic effects. In other words, how they impact the brain. And a lot of people now are saying, why do I have so much brain fog? Why can't, why can't I think hearing a lot of people talk? It's like, they keep repeating themselves and they forget what they said five minutes ago. They forgot what they ate yesterday. They forgot what they ate 10 minutes ago. And so uh, we are seeing a lot of um, neuroses in, in people's brains. And that's not meant to be a shameful thing. It's just that our brains can't function with this many poisons and ensuing parasites that live inside of them because they have a synergistic relationship. So none of these have been tested for how they react, you know, toxins with each other um, in, in what we call a synergistic effect. And what a lot of us, um, don't realize is that many people today are struggling with infertility about one in three to four, depending on where you're at. Um, they have a, they lose, they, they, they miscarry, they lose their baby. I mean, a lot of that is from EMF exposure. A lot of that's from toxins and that as well, parasites that live in the body. So I always tell women before you even start to build your womb, you know, do a solid cleanse, like at least three to six months, you know, three months of good uh, parasite cleansing, three months of uh, heavy metal chemical heavy, uh, and, and other environmental toxin um, cleansing. And then after a good six months, then your nest is ready for a baby. Uh, otherwise you're risking losing the baby or not having a healthy baby or your baby being born with on the average close to 300 chemicals and pollutants that a baby is born with before they even take their first breath. And it's so sad. And you know, hundred of the 180 of these cause cancer, 217 are toxic to the nervous system and brain and 208 cause birth defects. So there's a reason why kids are just set up for failure the moment that they're born. And so what happens is women too, women are also, and you, you actually did a really good show on this before Wendy, um, toxins that women are applying to their body, yeah. um, beauty toxins, hair toxins, body toxins. I always say, look out for your body, your boobs, your brain, your balls, <laughs> and your baby. 
you know, make sure all of these things are protected and, you know, people are so quick to cleanse, but they're also not considering the things that are causing them, um, symptoms from having a toxic body. So it's, it's just as important to reduce toxic load as it is to also cleanse the body. And the reason why parasites are so prevalent now is because they are bottom feeders. They are there to clean up the mess that our body cannot excrete quickly enough. And so the more of these things that we're slathering all over our body in the name of beauty, which actually causes aging quicker when you apply these toxins to your body, the more parasites you're going to have in the body and, and the more symptoms, condi- health conditions, um, mysterious, rare diseases that di- are diagnosed by doctors who say, oh, well, it's rare. And then you get really scared and you go, well, it's a rare disease. And oh, I'm so unique. And no one else has dealt with this before. So I guess I need to take this drug. And it's really, maybe there's something else going on. Maybe there's some questions that we haven't asked. And so that's why I want to talk about parasites today. So here's the question, you know, a lot, I hear a lot of people say, well, I don't have parasites. I can't see them come out of me. I, I don't have them, but here are the staggering statistics regarding parasites is that in recent medical studies, it's been estimated that 85% of the North American population has at least one of these suckers, these literal suckers living in their bodies. And some people feel it's as high as 95%. I mean, I don't see how anyone could be exempt from having parasites and you get them on foods. You get them if you have like an animal, if you live on a farm, I mean, they're just, I mean, there's thousands of parasites I mean, there's just, I don't see how people could yet avoid them at all. Exactly. Unless you're a robot, I guess. And yeah. A whole nother topic, <laughs> but yeah, it, it's true. Is it, they're everywhere, and um, if you're not washing your food, if you're eating chicken or beef, if you're eating sushi, if you're eating pork, I mean, I'm not saying by any means anything. These things are air quotes bad for you, um, but they're a part of our lives, so they're not bad. They're just bad when they grow out of proportion, and that's where people start to have symptoms and they can't make the connection. So we'll talk about that too. So yeah, they're they're everywhere, and hey. If your significant other has one and and you go do a parasite cleanse, but they don't do one, well, then you're just circulating bugs and circulating worms. And none of this stuff is meant to cause paranoia. It's just meant to educate so that ideally we're doing a whole house cleanse, a whole house parasite deworming cleanse, because this is what's more infectious than the V's. So I'll let you guys riff off of that with your own uh, puzzle pieces, uh, inferences. So humans can play host to hundreds of different types of parasites and they can invade all parts of the body, the, even the brain, like I was mentioning before, and we'll talk about uh, the full moon and how that connects to parasites too. And they eat the calcium linings of our bones, the protein coating of our nerves, the tissues in the colon, which can then cause congestion in the colon. So when you think about acne, it's pores getting backed up uh, because toxins are trying to leave but those, those pores get congested. It's the same things that's happening on the inside of your body. So anytime you see skin issues on the outside, it's because there's some kind of stagnation or congestion on the inside, right? Especially in your digestive tract and especially in the colon. So constipation is a big problem these days. You know, the average person is going like every four to five days now. And I know a lot of people who are like, I haven't pooped in a month. Whoa. Wow, that's kind of a big deal if you're not even pooping once or twice a day. So this is a part of the problem is that uh, they can release a lot of toxic waste that congests these pores where toxic waste is supposed to be eliminated, right? So, and that's also where the eggs are hatched <laughs> in the colon. So we have all different kinds of life cycles, and and that's what I do want to get to today as well is is how to approach a parasite cleanse comprehensively and completely. And if the colon isn't cleansed on a regular basis, which pooping is not an example of colon cleansing. You know, I'm talking deeper than that. And we'll talk about that today too. Um, or if one consumes, if, if you as a human consumes parasites, favorite foods like sugar and dairy and, and specific meats and, and raw uncooked foods or things that we don't clean parasites from the eggs will continue to hatch. And then they eat those nutrients as they grow. That's how they grow is they eat your nutrients. So you think about becoming you know, you're a vitamin factory, you take all these supplements, you're eating healthy diets, but yet very, very little of that is actually getting to your cells. So no wonder why you're deficient, but consuming the healthiest diet and no wonder why it's hard to lose weight, right? Because these parasites release a lot of waste in your body. So they eat your nutrients and then you might get the leftovers if you're lucky. 
So you're a prisoner to these things and they destroy your cells faster than they could be regenerated. So a lot of people are doing stem cells and PRP, all of which I love, but yet maybe that's why it's so popular is because they're decomposing us quicker than we can actually regenerate ourselves. Um, they produce toxins in the body and exhaust the immune system. And the immune system is all the rage now to protect us from air quotes, the next pandemic, whatever that, that looks like. Um, they lay thousands of eggs and every few minutes, another beautiful visual, and they could eventually destroy vital tissues and organisms and even cause death. So let people don't connect that the cancer, actually, you can see the, the connection between cancer and parasites is that, um, it's pretty stagnant, but yet chemo and radiation is the only, you know, Western medical treatment for that. And I know you talk about a lot of all about that with, because your dad, and you know, that that's what started you, Wendy. And, um, similar for me is, is I'll get to it. So this is very interesting is that they are said to have, they are said to have the ability to mimic vital organs in our bodies so that they can't be detected by doctors. So when people go get a, a colonoscopy and they're looking for problems in the colon because someone has hemorrhoids or you know whatever that looks like, diverticulitis, IBS, then they say, let's do a colonoscopy. Well, we didn't find anything maybe except for a little bit of inflammation, maybe some polyps. Let's cut the polyps out. But why is there inflammation? Why are there polyps? So these are microscopic organisms and we just don't have the treatments or the scans in Western medicine to even get to the root cause of why we have these issues. Yeah. In and, even, and even when you do testing, say a doctor's, a, you have a great doctor and they, they say, let's do parasite testing. I mean, you can only really uh, detect like a, a, you know, maybe they test for a dozen on a functional medicine test. And there's, there's hundreds or even thousands of different types of parasites. So it's, it's hard to detect them. They just test for the most common ones. Yeah. I always like to say, think about, think about war and, you know, the bad guys hiding in the bunker. And so it's our military's job to find the bad guy in the bunker, but good luck. You know, they're really, really good at adapting and hiding. So I don't even use just blood tests or stool tests or any kind of testing to, um, look at and say, well, you don't have a parasite. So that didn't show up on the test. And I wanted to get to that as being one of the myths that people believe too, because uh, that's still happening with a lot of practitioners, a lot of naturopaths, a lot of functional medicine doctors, not intentionally, but just based on training. So I hope this interview also makes it to them so that they can also consider how they organize their practice and support patients. National Ge Geographic says parasites have killed more people than all the wars in the history of humankind. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's a big statement. Very big. So we're all afraid of war, um, but yet we're having a, a war that's living within and no one is really teaching us how to reduce that war from within. So this is what these little suckers look like. And yeah. if you guys are listening on the podcast, this is what you'll see. Hopefully go watch the video of this. It's, <laughs> they're so cute. Look at these little worm selfies. So <laughs> many of them are microscopic and you can't see them because they're protozoa. And actually that's what's happening with a lot of these shots and you know what I'm talking about by that. A lot of these shots, um, have them inside of them and they're microscopic. Most of them are protozoa, which is why I, the thing that starts with an eye is um, very common that people are taking. And we'll talk about that a little bit later, but roundworms, tapeworm, hookworm, nematodes, um, cestodes, flukes, these are things that you might actually not be able to see uh, in your toilet when you poop, but they live inside of them. And when I'm working with uh, clients in my practice, what we see when they're on a parasite protocol is that oftentimes these things will come out separate from stool and you really can feel when they're coming out. Some of them like flukes, um, they kind of are part of your stool, but you, unless you're really looking for them, it's hard to find. So I always tell my clients, look back. There's treasure in that toilet. I have poop in a, through a strainer. I have clients say poop through a strainer so they can like see what's in there. It's I amazing. agree with that statement. People are like, well, <laughs> that's gross. Well, you guys, these are, these are part of you and they're there, you know, in a spiritual sense, they're, they've been there to protect you for a very long time. And so when- Some of them are big, like the take worm. I had another client that had like clumps of worm come out of her. Clumps of worms. Part? Which orifice? Oh, of, out of her, you know, her, her poop shoot. Hoop <laughs> shoot. Her, her rectum. Sorry. Yeah. yeah so yeah, she right. had. <laughs> so she. It was so she could see them for sure. But yeah, they're some of them microscopic, but some of them you can see for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the ones that I saw eight years ago, two years after I installed my breast implants, 
you know, I was like, and then realizing later, I'm like, was I pooping out silicone, you know, remnants of particles that were leaking from my, my breast implants, or was this really a, a tapeworm? You know, it's really hard to say because tapeworm kind of looks like silicone yeah. when it mm-hmm. comes out of the body. Cause I had that happening too. So will you ever know exactly which one's coming out of you? It, it, no, I, it, I even thought back then I wanted to send it to a lab and be part of the research and be part of the solution, but that was even difficult to do. So, yeah, I think it's really important. Like Wendy was saying, you could even um, use a strainer to see what's coming out of you. And then same thing for your children, you know, your children, if they're not feeling well, if they have allergies, sensitivities, intolerances, um, those things are not genetic as much as they are um, biologically inherited from womb to tomb. Uh, like I was mentioning, w- that's what happens. Mothers pass this stuff down to their babies and they don't intentionally do it, but this is why it's important to cleanse before you have a baby and start building a nest. Okay. So parasite exposure, what a lot of people think they might inherit parasites from is world travel. They think, well, I I don't travel. I don't eat a lot of sushi. I don't have pets. And so therefore the mind gets blocked from the possibility that they might be not only living inside of you because they are, everybody has parasites, but if they're living inside of you and thriving because of you, so you are the host. And if they are sucking the life out of you, then no wonder why you're tired. No wonder why you can't build your beauty. No wonder why your immune system feels so often you get sick so often. No wonder why you can't sleep. You know, there's a lot of different things. And I think about parasites with a connection from biological to energetic too. So it reduces our vibrational frequency. It lowers it. And so we then become more subject to spiritual attack too. So I believe everything's connected. Where do we really contract them? Contaminated drinking water. I once got Giardia from um, showering in uh, Peru in the deep Amazon jungles and uh, did some plant medicine down there. And, you know, people say, well, Diane, can't you just do, you know, the, plant medicine and it gets rid of all your parasites. I'm like, no, because I came back from that trip with Giardia. So contaminated drinking water, it's very important to really know your, you know, your drinking water and how to clean that out. Contaminated meats, insect bites, gardening, pets. Um, sorry guys, but a lot of you are licking your, like doing the French kiss thing with your animals. And that could actually uh, literally bite you in the butt later on. And I have horses, I have a horse, but I'm very cautious about, you know, how I interact with her. So I'm not saying don't bond, but yeah, we're, a lot of people are doing this a little bit recklessly, uh, swimming in lakes, creeks, and then kissing and drinking from, um, our loved ones. So, and then feeding them, of course they stick around because it's kind of like a, a, a pound puppy they're running around and, or, or a cat stray cat. They keep coming back because you feed them same thing with parasites. So you can't just go on a cleanse. You also want to ask the question of what's feeding these things. So I believe very much in the terrain theory. Uh, And the terrain theory means that if our immune system um, is rolling out, it's tired fatigue from fighting a lot of these bugs we've had for a long time. It's rolling out the red carpet to allow them to thrive. So uh, clean the fish tank is the, um, the recommendation that I have and what we're going to talk about today. I agree. I agree. So I'm going to scroll through these pretty quickly because you guys can go back to the video, push pause anytime. Um, But my point is here, we're going to go through about eight of these slides that show what are the symptoms of parasite infections? Because people ask, well, how do I know if I have a parasite infection, if I don't see it come out of me? Well, I categorize them in stomach and digestive complications. I call it bipolar bowels where there's no consistency to your bowels. (laughs) (laughs) And you know, bipolar bowels equals bipolar brain. And wonder why am I anxious and depressed all at the same time? And it, it starts in your gut, really. There's a whole elevator called the vagus nerve that connects those things. Um, and then abdominal pain, swelling, uh, bloating, mucus in the stools, leaky gut, nausea, hemorrhoids, burning in the, in the stomach, um, and bloody stools doesn't sound very fun. And some people say, oh, I got bloody stools just because I have a hemorrhoid. That's please, you guys stop making those assumptions. There could be something really going on down there. So, you know, just because you have bloody stools, don't pass it off as nothing that's gaslighting ourselves. And we've been taught that to, to talk that way to ourselves, but really this is your body speaking. Other symptoms where your body is speaking that it could be in the language of parasites is skin, di- skin disorders and allergies, dry skin, dry hair, brittle hair, hair loss, allergies, itchy nose, um, allergies. I mentioned that earlier. And the fun one is crawling sensation under the skin. You know, Oh, what is that? Is why do I feel like there's flies landing on me all the time? I had this when I first did Botox years ago and I was laying in bed at night going, why does it feel like I have crawling, creepy crawlies all over my body. So, um, any level of toxic load can bring on the parasites. 
So you can read through all these later on mood and anxiety problems, um, fearfulness or fear, fear, having a lot of fear, um, unrealistic fears, paranoia, unclear thinking, slow reflexes, and just kind of brain fogginess oftentimes. And you just can't pinpoint why sleep and energy issues, uh, chronic fatigue, be careful, not just to blame it on your adrenals. It's not your adrenals fault. They're responding to their environment. Um, and then teeth grinding, bedwetting, drooling while asleep, uh, disturbed sleep, multiple awakenings, having nightmares, uh, insomnia. So obviously if you're not getting good rest, you're not waking up feeling like you've, you, you can conquer the world. And then caffeine is your first thing that you grab. And then in caffeine is coffee is very acidic and it parasites love that environment. They love alcohol. They love acidic environments. They thrive yeah, and all these cuties, they're nocturnal. So they become active at night and then they, your body loses cortisol and wakes you up. Yeah. They love to have the party between one and 3 AM. They're like, Hey, let's, let's start throwing, uh, all the, the party favors throughout her or his body in the middle of the night. And then you wonder, Oh, I think it's just cause I have to pee. No, it's your body's waking you up for a very specific reason. So other things too, a lot of people are struggling with pain and, and pain management. I have a very interesting slide. I'll show you guys with, uh, what many people are reaching toward, um, that how could we ever get rid of the pain when we don't get rid of the cause of the pain? So muscle and joint complications and complaints are very common with parasite infections, muscle pain, joint pain, muscle cramping, numbness of the hands or feet, heart pain, uh, pain in the navel, pain in the back, thighs, or shoulders. I mean, you can get adjusted and you can massage your body, but those things are going to keep coming back unless we get rid of the reason why you have those pains. Arthritis, you know, autoimmune disease, it just, these parasites make it rain a lot of toxins that cause a lot of pain throughout the body. And then a fast heartbeat, um, blood sexual reproductive problems, um, hypoglycemia, PMS, anemia, very common with women, very, very low. Um, iron, very low ferritin, candida, yeast infections, UTIs, cysts and fibroids. Um, a lot of people don't make the connection here with women, especially that parasites love our sacral chakra. They, they love our reproductive organs. They love that area. Interstitial cystitis is very common too. Um, bacterial infections, uh, candida overgrowth. It, women continue to take products and insert them into their vagina, hoping that these things will go away. But the question really is, is why do we have these symptoms? Why do we have these issues? Sure. It could be that you had a great, you know, love making session the night before. Um, but it could, could be your tampons could be birth control. Yes. But it's a combination of many of these things and they could cause a lot of water retention. In fact, one person that, um, uh, I'm working with right now, her sister, she just came to her and said, I do not know why I am gaining one pound a day. And she's gained 20 pounds in the last month. So there's a lot of imbalances that these things cause other yeah, women, they just blame themselves or they think it's just their hormones. And there's, there's a lot of different factors that can contribute to that weight gain. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, the first thing that they'll do is they'll say, well, I'm going to go take some HRT. I'm going to go get some bioidentical hormones. I'm, I'm going to go see an endocrinologist. And they're going to give me Synthroid or they're going to give me birth control because I'm desperate. And we do what we want to need to do because we can, we're wearing invisible capes and we need to keep moving throughout our life, you know, a lot of super moms out there or, you know, super leaders. And, and we have a lot of responsibilities, uh, but we're just not being taught what is causing a lot of the, the blocks that prevent us from being uh, able to be a super mom. So other issues could be um, mouth oral issues, body odor. Um, you can't Botox your body odor around uh, your armpits. I think that's just crazy how people are still injecting their armpits with Botox. So they stop sweating instead of asking, why am I sweating in the first place or sweating is natural, but it also could be increased because you have a lot of toxic waste that these parasites are dumping throughout your body. Night sweats is also very common. That's not just menopause. That's not just hot flashes. That's also a lot of toxic waste throughout the body. Weight issues we talked about as well, uncontrollable hunger eating, your appetite's kind of also bipolar all over the place. Um, can't stop eating carbs. You really wish you could stop, but you can't, you feel kind of empowered, disempowered, you know, to your food cravings it could be weight gain or weight loss it could be longstanding obesity. Um, so they, it can really show up many different ways. Uh, um, one of my friends, David Wolf says, when you can get rid of, when you get rid of parasites, you'll never have a cough, cold, flu, or fever ever again. And a body filled with toxins, like heavy metals, um, experiences a lot of weight loss resistance where no matter what diet, and exercise changes that someone makes, they'll find themselves still not losing weight until toxins are properly cleared from the body. Weight loss will be a challenge. 
because parasites are there to mop up the mess of metals and a lot of these mold spores. And they're there because they have to be. And when they show up, they're a clue or any of these symptoms show up that infer that they might be underneath your proverbial parasitic hood. They're a clue that you've lost a healthy intestinal probiotic species and a balanced gut microbe. We, we like to see, um, we, we, there is a place for bad bugs in our system, like 20% bad, 80% good. But when we lose that balance and it's usually typically the opposite, when I see in stool testing, it, that means that your immune system is weak. We've rolled out the red carpet for these infections to come in and thrive and you get sick easily and you can't fight off these parasites. Even if you're someone who doesn't get sick and you say, oh, I don't get sick that often. It doesn't mean that you don't have parasites. It shows up in other ways, as you saw in all those symptoms. So it's not just about killing parasites. Like Wendy talks about, it's also getting on a proper parasite or a heavy metal cleanse because parasites are that I'm off of the mess that we can excrete properly and quickly enough. And then also getting rid of the things, you know, silver fillings or breast implants or things that constantly are leaking heavy metals throughout our body. So those are the ticking time bombs that the parasites have a job. They're there to clean up the mess from the things that live inside of us constantly. So candida mold parasites, they're all protected inside of the body. Speaking of heavy metals, they're protected behind the wall of metals. Um, so they have this symbiotic synergistic relationship where they say, Hey, I'll protect you if you protect me. So there's this barrier, which means that when you go on a parasite cleanse, you also want to address you know, heavy metals at the same time. I, I see a lot of people going on a candida cleanse or a parasite cleanse or heavy metal cleanse, but they don't think about the entire habitat where they all love to thrive together and they protect one another. They got each other's back. So without addressing the gut bugs at the same time, you might feel worse, which is why a lot of people end up quitting candida specifically that lives inside of parasites releases up to 79 different toxins when they die. So some symptoms of candida die off are similar to candida overgrowth. So when people are like, Oh, it must be die off. And they make the assumption it just must be die off. Well, are we also going after the parasites? Are you just doing a candida cleanse, but not doing a parasite cleanse at the same time? Because it could just be that there's a lot of candida still remaining in the parasites. And it's very important to make sure that your, um, your drainage pathways are open, that you're pooping properly well enough, that you're sleeping well, um, that you're sweating. A lot of people don't sweat enough. And, and Wendy and I are huge you know, on, on saunas and ensuring that all of your drainage pathways are open. Otherwise, when you want to go to excrete these bad guys, they don't have a place to go. And then they'll go recirculate and probably cause more damage, make it to your brain and you feel worse, which is why most people end up quitting. They think the cleanse didn't work, but it's just that your body probably wasn't ready to really eliminate all of the exoskeletons of things like parasites, which also release 70 to 80 toxins when they die. The worst three being ammonia, acetylhyde and ethanol. So these are really harmful to the body. They cause hormone imbalances, adrenal issues, thyroid issues, deficiencies, respiratory and immune system um, problems. And the thing is, is that we have a lot of people who are taking a lot of anti-inflammatories or taking um, pain pills, but I want to get to um, the question of how can parasites cause this much damage? And it's because they harbor a long list of poisons and pathogens inside of them. So you saw some of the bigger ones. And then there's also microscopic ones. 70% of them are protozoa and they're microscopic. You can't see them. 30% are visible by the human eye. And we'll get to the, toward the end, you want to stay to the end because you'll see some visual images of what the ones that you can see look like. The bigger ones will carry more toxic waste. And those, that's why those are the highest priority to get rid of. Lime lives in nematodes. So whenever I hear the Disney show, little Nemo now, I think little lime, <laughs> because in these nematodes carry a lot of lime. So a lot of people will go on a lime cleanse or a lime protocol, but then they don't go after the parasites that are harboring and essentially are the Uber driver for lime spirochetes. Bacteria live in ascaris roundworms. Mold lives inside parasites. Viruses, toxins are stored in parasites as well. So if you go take an antiviral or an antibacterial, or you take an antibiotic, you're really not getting into the bodies where these parasites are harboring them because they're safely stored. They're safely in their bunker. And then parasites produce exosomes like viruses. So you might wonder, like, why do I feel like I have EBV, like Epstein-Barr or HPV? You know, a lot of times it's because these parasites are releasing a lot of these viruses that really have not been properly addressed. So I, I do strongly urge you to consider 
when I hear a lot of people say I've got Epstein bar, I got my Epstein bar is killing me. And I'm like, well, also remember that they're, they're connected with parasites. So if you're going to address any of these bugs, do a total bug protocol because they all, um, they party together. Let's just say that. And then parasites are sponges for heavy metals and other toxins. So when these critters die off, they release a lot of these problematic poisons. And I want to get to the, this is the pain point here. The problematic poisons like ammonia that are released from parasites, they really take you out. They, these are the people who end up in bed for a very long time. And they, they, they don't understand why they get diagnosed with chronic fatigue. Um, they, they start wondering if they have cancer, that they're dying, but doctors miss this in their diagnosis because they're not taught this stuff in school, nor do insurance companies approve of labs to identify and properly treat them. So Lyme slows drainage and elimination pathways, which is why drainage is really important. And then it also decreases ATP, which is AKA your cells ability to make energy and why we need to make sure the body has enough energy before you go on a proper cleanse, because cleansing is, it, it can take a lot of energy from you. It can drain you but you also want to get them out because otherwise if they live inside of you, they'll drain you long-term. So since parasites use heavy metals to make its protective layer called the biofilm, removing metals and biofilm is also essential. And you've heard Winnie talk so much about that in all of her, her protocols is that these things have such a connection that you may go on a heavy metal cleanse. And I mean, Wendy, do you see people who do a metal cleanse with you? And then they're like, why do I see parasites coming out of me too? Yes, absolutely. So many times, uh, like I said, the client that had clumps of worm coming out of them, she was starting a, a heavy metal detox. And yeah, it's just uh, when you start kind of, you know, getting rid of some of these metals that the parasites naturally follow. Yeah. Yeah. And then people start to think, well, where are these clumps of things coming from? And a lot of times we, we have a hard time. I mean, people who go on a keto diet, they're like, wow, the keto diet made me feel really crappy. And I'm not really dogmatic in my approach to any macro. I just think we are had having a hard enough time eating real food. But if somebody's drainage pathways are congested and clogged, uh, oftentimes because of these biofilms, because of the parasites and heavy metals and everything within the parasites, then your gallbladder and your liver has a hard, hard time producing and releasing and storing bile. And they're, that's properly what supports the breakdown of fat soluble foods and waste and toxins and nutrients. So vitamins A, D, E, and K are all fat soluble. And if we have a hard time because these parasites are leaving a mess and congesting things, then you can't break down fat foods and you also can't break down and absorb fat soluble nutrients then you end up wondering why am I vitamin D deficient when I'm getting an hour worth of sun or vitamin A deficient. And I'm, I feel like my skin is sagging so quickly. So this is why ensuring that your elimination channels are open is really important so that these bugs uh, and their waste have a way out. That's what we call drainage. So a lot of people will say, Oh, I do. I do a sauna. Therefore I'm detoxing, but really, um, it's a drainage pathway. Um, I call it more of a drainage supporter. And then that way the bugs have a way to leave when you're doing a proper detox. So your a detox is properly pulling these things out and killing them and then making sure that they can uh, get out the body. So they're not recirculating and then parasite poop and die off. This is what it looks like in the body. So that releases ammonia. Like I talked about, and ammonia is very painful when you have a lot high levels of ammonia on the body. It's very painful and possible ammonia areas is, is similar to Lyme. That's why a lot of people are getting Lyme diagnoses and it could be a false positive, could be a false negative. A lot of women who've had breast implants got false uh, positives and they think that they have Lyme, but really it could be because there's a higher level of toxic burden. And then that means you have high, higher level of parasites, which then release more ammonia and other gases. Ammonia can end up in the brain, heart, joints, spine, liver, reproductive organs, uh, the hips, the muscles, and it feels like a never ending cycle to try to get rid of the pain. So why isn't this talked about in pain management clinics or breast implant illness or explant surgery? This new street drug is 10,000 times more potent than morphine. And now is showing up in Canada and the U S this is an article from 2016. So this street drug is a hundred times stronger than fentanyl and fentanyl is a hundred times stronger, stronger than morphine, which makes W18 10,000 10, times stronger than classic opiates. So a lot of people are taking stronger and stronger medications because they're in more and more pain. And why is that? Maybe this 
parasite overgrowth is a missing link when we can finally address these things and people won't be grabbing for stronger doses or maybe illegal doses of many of these things. So there's a lot of negative effects on this W18 street drug. Um, and you only need a tiny speck of it to have major respiratory issues and there is no test for it. So, um, fentanyl is now being used in uh, surgeries as a painkiller, oftentimes not disclosed to the patient. So I, I also recommend that when you go get surgeries, that you ask the question of what kind of pain management drugs are they using? But this just shows us the mere illustration is that people are in a lot of pain and they're super desperate to get out of it. And one of the bigger core issues on whether, why they're in so much pain is parasite overgrowth. So most people do, do things to get rid of symptoms. Uh, that come from parasites, but these things don't work. A lot of people will try mucinex because they have a lot of congestion, but that only dries out the biofilm, but it leaves the bugs intact and allows them to grow bigger and stronger. And you'll still continue to have a lot of this post-nasal drip. Antibiotics kill the good and the bad bacteria, but not the parasites. Acne creams, medications, a lot of people do this for um, cystic acne, but this, these cysts are caused by oftentimes parasites. I took Accutane and that's actually a pancreatic chemo drug. But that's actually being prescribed to a lot of patients now, you know, microdosing Accutane every day for the rest of your life is like the thing that I heard five years ago. And I was like, wow, I, I better do a podcast on this. Cause that's pretty, that's pretty crazy. You know, microdose chemo, microdose antibiotics, microdose, um, uh, ivermectin, microdo, micro, microdose, these things long-term are actually going to destroy your natural flora, which going to that, back to that little fish tank thing starts to destroy, you know, your, um, your terrain. And then, then it creates an habitable environment for these things to flourish and just cutting out a lot of things like fibroids and cysts and tumors and boils won't work to fix the root cause why they keep coming back, which is parasites and a lot of their excrement and histamines block your cells ability to register your body's response to histamines. But things that we're told are merely from things that we're allergic to, but really the truth is the largest histamine producer in your body is parasites. So Medical gaslighting, you know, what you're going to hear maybe from your doctor or have, or maybe it's just lack of knowledge. So maybe it's just not that they're bad. They might've just not been trained. Parasites don't show up to your point earlier, Wendy, parasites don't show up on your lab test. So you don't need to do a parasite cleanse. I hear this one so commonly, but the truth is parasites hide really well and they rarely will show up on tests. And when people go into a uh, parasite cleansing, there's a lot of hearsay on, you know, what the best thing to do is. And I, I hear a lot of people um, saying, okay, I'm going to do activated charcoal. I'm going to do a bentonite clay cleanse, or I'm just going to take some diatomaceous earth. And that's all I need. And these are the best binders and parasite killers. Um, but the truth is that they can be weak bonds for parasites, um, to clean up the mess. And they can be very dehydrating, stripping the body of nutrients. Uh, they also don't travel systemically. Most of them stay, uh, in the gut. And like we showed you earlier, Parasites swim all over your body. Wait till I sh share with you guys what happens during the full moon. And these things can be very, very hard on the gut. So activated charcoal is effective at binding things, but it also binds to the good stuff. And I know you talk about that a lot too, Wendy, is that how can we get rid of the bad stuff and add good stuff too? So that's, that's the best of both worlds. And it really hasn't existed uh, up until the last you know few years since we've been talking about it because detox doesn't have to be stripping of the body. It doesn't have to be this terrible process where you feel like hell and you have to take a week off from work. Um, yeah. You might want to be a little closer to the toilet when you're going through a, you know, the very earlier stages of the parasite <laughs> cleanse. <laughs> um, so it's a benefit to work from home when you're doing a parasite cleanse. <laughs> yes, um, yes. So myth number two is that all I need is alkaline water because it detoxifies the body and it's all that you need. I hear that one still so commonly, um, don't know exactly where it came from, but, um, the truth is that it has no binding qualities and nor can it detox intracellularly. So it might help the body uh, to reduce levels of acid, uh, might, and which the parasites love an acidic environment. Um, but there's still never really been studies on that, on how you can you know, get rid of parasites using alkaline water alone. Myth number three is I just need to take antimicrobials like oregano and garlic or antibiotics to kill the bugs and I'll be fine. And the, the thing is I have a lot of clients who come to me and they're like, Oh, I'm on scram. Like I just did a seminar last night. Um, and I, Oh, I'm taking scram. Is, is that all I need? Is that sufficient? And scram is, uh, it's an antimicrobial. 
and it has a lot of herbs that go after bugs. And um, my answer is that, yeah, you know, that could be effective, but it's not adding good stuff back in, nor is it going back in and healing the gut or the tissues that these parasites go in and gobble up. So it could be effective at killing some parasites that are there. Um, but it's not just about killing. Remember we also killing is very young. It's, you know, when we look at the yin and yang, it's, it's very yang. It's very like warrior energy, but you have this wildfire that gets rid of a lot of the beautiful foliage and you want the yin energy, like the feminine energy to go back and plant seeds and, and nourish the, the, the gut, the microbes. So yeah, it could be effective taking scram or something like that, but we also want a full holistic approach to go back and also heal the gut lining and heal a lot of the tissues too. Um, I actually had one client that just texted me as we were um, talking on one of these last slides, Wendy, and I'll share with that what she had mentioned in the next slide, because um, she had been doing just scram before. And then I shifted her over to the thing we're going to talk about next. And she's like, whoa, there's a huge difference. <laughs> so the next one um, is myth number four is that, um, something that we know is either is all I need to kill parasites and maybe the CB thing. Uh, but the truth is that every parasite and nine viral protocol needs a systemic binder along with it, not just gut binders, but, um, systemic meaning that you're, you're this, the binders are traveling throughout the body and it's not just staying in the gut. Cause while your gut does have a lot of waste, um, it does house a lot of parasites. They travel, like I was talking about earlier to your brain and through your nose. Um, it's a funny visual, but, um, they're everywhere. So you don't just want to detox parasites in the gut or just want to do binders that stay in the gut. You want them to travel systemically because bugs house toxins. Remember that. And one thing I, I forgot to mention earlier is that heavy metals are antennas that draw in electro smog, you know, EMF frequencies. And so one of the things I learned when I was going through my breast implant illness journey is that with breast implants, having several heavy metals in them, um, they can act as antennas to draw in EMFs because those, um, metals are inside uh, of the body. And most of the time they're in somewhere inside of a parasite. So you really want to make sure that you're addressing that too. So the solutions, um, what I just shared with you are solutions that most people I see try, and maybe they work a little bit, but they don't work all the way or they're not complete enough. And again, it's not just about killing. It's also going back and restoring and balancing and adding life back into, because the more life that you have in your gut and your body, healthy microbes, um, the better the chance that you have of having a big infection in the, in the future. Cause a lot of people say, well, how do I get rid of parasites and then never get them again? Well, you can't never get them again. It's just about having a balance and, and creating a system so that you can keep them as far away as possible and not feed them. Um, and also ensure that your drainage pathways are always, always, always open. So, um, this specific slide right here, that is the step number one, I'd recommend to everybody. And that is to ensure that drainage. Um, your lymphatic system and your liver support um, is all there before you go into a parasite cleanse. Uh, I, I hear people say, can I just go straight into the parasite cleanse? And I'm like, yeah, you can. But a lot of people, when they miss this step, they still have lingering symptoms or they still have remnants of things because uh, perhaps the trash can't leave the body all the way. And considering, you know, if you went to your doctor and said, Hey, I, I would like a parasite cleanse. I would like to do a parasite test. And I'm talking about Western medicine. They're going to, they, they'll say, yeah, we'll check for a few parasites. Um, but the ones that we look for on lab tests, there's at least 30 and they might test for like five, um, if they even test for those. So they're not going to help you a lot here, especially they also don't understand the lymphatic connection. You know, the average MD uh, learns one hour uh, about the lymphatic system and their training. So it's really sad. They're just not taught this stuff and it's not their fault. It's just our broken system. So it's our job to be our own best doctor, right? So these three here, um, there's several studies on Tudka, especially that open up the bile ducts and the gallbladder. If you still have one and the liver, I, I love Tudka. Oh, I, you're I taking take, it? I take that. Yes. I'm taking it periodically. Yeah. It's really, really good. It's good for blood sugar too. For managing yes. Blood. Yes. Cause blood sugar is so related to our level of toxic load and whether you have parasites or other microorganisms in the body. And Tudka has been a huge miracle, especially I work with, um, some teenagers and children who are on the spectrum and they'll try to get into a sauna and they won't sweat. And in the first sign for me, when I hear that somebody's not sweating in a sauna is their gallbladder is extremely backed up and they, they don't have healthy bile flow and it's not triggering the body to release through the skin pores. So then that means that person's other drainage 
organs, elimination patterns, they're going to have to put a lot of pressure on those. Um, so yeah, Tudka, when I, whenever I hear someone say, but I don't sweat well, I'll, the, the customary thing people will say is, okay, well, maybe it's your thyroid, which yes, it can be in part your thyroid. Um, but oftentimes it's a drainage issue. They're just really clogged. So Tudka is like the superstar that I think everybody needs to be on a pretty regular basis to ensure that our bile is flowing. It, I think it could have saved a lot of people from losing their gallbladder and in, in gallbladder surgeries because our liver has to work really hard. So when we are allowing the gallbladder and the liver to work better, then everything can work better. Um, kale support is kidney and liver support. So the way I used to lead cleanses is I would always ask the question, how do I help people also with their kidneys? Cause we, we have all the, like you and I both have a liver cleanse and it's like, there's a lot of liver cleanses out there, but how much focus is there also in the kidneys and then the whole organ system. So what I like so much about this is that it includes all of that. So it opens up all of the drainage pathways. The more your lymphatic system is open, the better it's flowing, the better you're sweating, the better your skin looks, the, the thicker your hair can be, the younger that you can look. Um, talk about like a pro youth. I don't like to say anti-aging as much pro youth <laughs> approach is to really ensure that your drainage pathways are open. So uh, I like an accelerated uh, fashion. So if you guys get any of these kits, and by the way, um, don't use the links on any of the slides here. I have a very special coupon code for Wendy's followers only uh, on the very last slide. And that's where you're going to want to go for all of this um, to order all of these kits. Um, and what you'll see is, is on that landing page, you'll see some description of these kits, but I have an entire PDF that I've created on how you can have a successful parasite cleanse, how to follow it, um, sensitive dosing. Cause some people are really sensitive and, you know, a doctor might say, Oh, just take what's on the bottle. Or someone might say, just take what's on the bottle. And then that makes you feel crappy. You might be very sensitive and you might need to slowly work your way up. So I have sensitive dosing. I have regular dosing. And then I have like superstar perfectionist go all in dosing. <laughs> and if you don't, don't feel well with that, well, you can go back to sensitive dosing. So, um, you could take this for about a week and then, and you, and the, at the accelerated dosing, that's why it's called four, four, four. Um, you take all of these and that's all in the description in the, the ebook that I've written for you guys. So you might be like, okay, this is too much information, but I make it very simple in the, the guide so that the, the way that you do this is you not just go after a kill, you prepare the body. You don't just throw in Mike Tyson to a ring before he's trained for several years. Um, going after parasites is like a championship game. So you really want to make sure that you're prepared for that. And then the next thing you want to do is the dun da 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 then you want to go into the parasite cleanse and you'll notice in this kit, uh, solution step number two is that there are three different formulas for parasites. And the first one, para one is one of my favorites. So a lot of people are really constipated. Uh, their bowels are congested and they're taking a lot of things that are very unhealthy for them to, uh, try to poop because they're migrating. Motor complex is really stunted. Maybe you're not getting enough water. Maybe you're deficient in magnesium. And that's where Wendy can help you guys with her heritage mineral analysis offers. Um, but whether, whatever that might be, people are taking very unhealthy things to keep their bowels moving. Um, so there's a lot of things over the counter that are just terrible for your gut and to take migrated motor complex supplements to get you to contract your muscles without encouraging your bowels to do it on their own is a long-term recipe for disaster and further constipation, which bugs will thrive on because the more constipated you are, the more toxins you're backed up on, the more parasites that you're going to have because they need to mop up the mess that you can't excrete. So the more waste you have in the body, the more parasites. So Para one is awesome. Um, it has a lot of herbs in there that really help the body to contract. And it's kind of like a chia seed, which really expands. Uh, and over time it helps to push things out. Talk about looking down behind you and seeing, it looks like a whole tube just came out of you. So mimosa pudica is the star ingredient in that one. Um, so for people who are really constipated, bottom line, para one is a, is one thing I recommend to my clients to keep them, their bowels moving and also to keep parasites moving out. So, um, what you'll notice is there's a binder in here. And like I said earlier, if you go into parasite cleanse, don't ever forget that you need a binder in there somehow, somewhere. And this one specifically is a binder. There's six different binders that I like to use with clients, but this one specifically goes after the, uh, excrement of basically parasite poop and, uh, their little exoskeletons, as well as the other toxins that they release. And here's a really neat thing. Wendy, um, Tomorrow is a full moon. Did you know that? I did not. Yeah. So I love tracking full moons. <laughs> this one, so I just you know when I, the parasites are going to go nuts. That's, I think that's why people go a little nutty on the full moon. They can't sleep. It's just all their parasites going cuckoo. Yeah, I know. It's so, so when you guys are acting mean to people and you're like, uh, 
you have a hard time being nice. Let's just say, and you feel like you're irritable and moody. You could just blame it on the parasites. Um, or if somebody flips you off on the road and has road rage, you might be like, Oh, that's just the parasites. And you could just throw them a little forgiveness card. Um, but truly the reason why uh, it's a really good time to do a parasite cleanse during the full moon is that our body is synced. Our body is synced with nature and our body is synced with the full moon. Same as women and with our cycles, ideally we're synced with the moon. And so during the full moon, melatonin, your sleep hormone drops. Melatonin is also an anti-inflammatory that keeps parasites in check. And then your serotonin goes up during the full moon. Serotonin is what parasites use to catapult themselves throughout your body. So essentially it's their slip and slide that allow them to travel throughout your body faster and more effectively. So the more serotonin that you have during a full moon, which you might be a little happier during the full moon because you have more serotonin, you might poop more because of that too. Um, but bugs love it. Parasites love serotonin and they hate melatonin. So melatonin keeps them in check. And during the full moon, melatonin's down. That's why you have sleep problems. Um, and then you might be more anxious or, or a little loopy during the full moon because the parasites are moving about freely throughout your body. It's, it's really fun. So <laughs> during the full moon, rather than going through all of that, I recommend that you do this for seven days. And I, again, the instructions are all going to be in the guide. Um, but you would take these for three days before the full moon. And then you take more of it during the day of the full moon and then three days after. So essentially the kit before this and the kit now, um, should take you about two weeks when you're actually macro dosing. And, um, the client that had sent me a message while we were just doing this said, um, just wanted to give you a, pos a positive customer feedback. Uh, the liver detox is incredible. The black mark on my skin where all the heavy metals were trying to surface finally released day two, the mark went from black to gray. Now it's almost entirely gone. Um, apparently my liver could detox, but, but needed help flushing the heavy metals out of my system. So she was the one who was taking scram before. And I said, scram is great, but let's go deeper. And scram could be as an example, it's an antimicrobial. A lot, a lot of people buy scram is kind of like maybe a little bit what's happening in para three. But also what, what these supplements have is carbon technology to also add the good stuff back in. Um, and they're all very plant-based and healthy. So then the third step after that would be, um, if you have stuff of Wendy's and you can use her heavy metal, um, mineral solutions that she has or other binders, like the, the pectoral C, you guys can use that if you already have it. Um, or this is a third step that I take clients on, which is the heavy metal, um, and environmental toxin binder. That's what HMET stands for. And then iodine, iodine is so important, um, to block a lot of the halogens and the fluoride things that block our pineal gland. Um, that might cause you to have crazy dreams, nightmares, and then the minerals is adding good stuff back in. And these minerals, um, also have a lot of carbon technology that also work to strip the body of unhealthy biofilms. And that could be all throughout the body. In fact, I even use things like CT minerals, uh, to nebulize because I don't know if you guys ever get that post nasal drip, or if you feel like your, your nose is just always running. Uh, a lot of that can be resolved when we get rid of parasites and all of the orifices where they like to live, uh, and then adding good stuff back in such as a CT biotic, which is, a, um, a, uh, probiotic, which, which has its own uh, levels of prebiotics as well. So, um, oh, I should have warned you guys. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to eat. Like I, I just did not even see this. <laughs> well, I hope you're not about to eat some, uh, escargot when <laughs> this one on the left. And if you guys are listening to the podcast, you can watch her video. Um, I'm about to the have one on the pad left, thai. I'm about to have pad thai. This is not helping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It looks like some, uh, pad thai, the one on the right, <laughs> um, you know, and, and these things could actually be, you know, tapeworm loves the small intestine and those suckers could be eight between eight and 10 feet long, eight actually Ew. sometimes 11 and 12 feet long. Ew. Yeah. And so you might see them come out in clumps. Um, but this one on the left looks like, uh, has little antennas and that one is a very fresh catch from my client this morning that sent a picture and said, look at this lovely alien that came out of me. So we have all these, this fascination with aliens that we watch on sci-fi movies, but what about the aliens that live inside of us that need to go out? So, um, yeah, I, I, this one in the middle was me years ago doing my parasite cleanse. And I just started getting a little crazy with it, like making shapes with it, but it's all fun and games you guys, but this is much better out than in for real. I mean, we can make fun of it, laugh at it and get grossed out by it. But when these things leave the body, um, you can start to absorb nutrients better and things just feel like they could work better. So you're not spending a lot of money on supplements and things that are just not getting where they need to go because these things create biofilm, as you can see what it looks like here. And it coats the receptor sites of our small intestine and other places that we absorb the good stuff. So this allows things just to thrive better. And this is why it's so pro-youth and anti-aging to go on a parasite cleanse. 
And then this is not any of my clients, the picture here, not me. Um, but for the average person, they've got like 15 to 20 pounds of this mucoid plaque in their colon alone. And so it may come out looking like this because it's been so congested. That person probably has high cholesterol because a lot of things just get backed up in the colon. Uh, so you might see some that look a little bit more compacted and hard like this, but again, better out than in. So my warrior worm wish for you is to detox these suckers from your body. So they stop sucking your life force, nutrients, and cellular vitality, because you have nothing to lose except maybe 15 to 20 pounds in your colon alone, where these things live as well as the hundred plus symptoms that parasites and their minion mess cause. So happy fishing friends. And hopefully you can put this on your calendar for the next full moon. So the force of the next full moon will be with you. Uh, it's uh, the full moon this week when we're recording this, but the next time you guys listen to this, you know, maybe if you order some of these supplements uh, from the link that I have here, then you can, it probably takes like five to seven days to get there. And then ideally you're starting to plan this around the full moon. And all of that is in the guide that I'm going to give to you guys, um, for being Wendy's followers. If you go to diancaser.com forward slash Myers detox supplements, um, you can grab any of these and then use Myers detox 10 to get 10% off. And we will have an expiration date on that. Wendy will put all that in the links below and the information below. Um, and I will give you guys, like I said, a guide because people kind of get these supplements and they get overwhelmed. Well, I got my supplements now what? And there's so many options. I don't want you to have information paralysis. Uh, I also have little recipes that you can follow in there too, because um, there are a lot of things that, that you can consume in your diet that you can really work on clearing some of these parasites as well. Gut parasites that is. So people also say, well, I'll just do like some papaya and, and pineapple and um, and coconut oil and, and pumpkin seeds. And that's all I need. Well, that might help to get rid of some parasites in your gut. But again, they travel all around the body, especially when you have high levels of serotonin, like the full moon. So all of this will be much easier. You know, when you receive your supplements, now, you know, exactly what to do. So from the moment that you purchase, we'll send you an email and a guide on how to start preparing. So the moment you get them, you get all excited, like it's Christmas and you go on your parasite purge. And ideally all the symptoms we talked about earlier will start to subside. So that's all I got for you guys for now. And I'll turn it over to Wendy. Yeah. And this is so important to do. It's really important to do a parasite cleanse periodically. And it's just something that, you know, I think a lot of people just aren't, they're not doing, they're not thinking about it. Um, but I, I assure you it's something you need to do. I've done many, many parasite cleanses in my day and have been super, super happy with the results. And I think Diane, you've got like a really good plan here, like a really good kit, uh, not to mention all the instructions, because there are a lot of different options for parasite cleansing out there. And I think um, they can get really complex with too many, too many different products. And it's just uh, kind of confusing. I think you made it really, really simple for people. And mm -hmm. I know this product line, the cell, cell core is like, it's a really, really good product line, really high quality ingredients. So it's something that I definitely recommend for people. Yeah. Yeah. And if you guys get overwhelmed, even from the three phases there, you can just jump straight into the parasite cleanse kit. You know, if that's just what you want to do, but really make sure that you're doing things beforehand to ensure that you're, you're getting your sweat glands or you're, you're, you're moving toxins out through the skin. You're active you know who you are, I, but I still recommend going through every phase ideally for the best results. But if you just want to get some parasites out and just try phase two, go for it. But like I said, my client has been pretty, uh, she's a very thin, beautiful, you know, um, woman, very active, but even just adding that first phase in, she noticed that it really helped to clear out some of the other things because our liver has over 500 jobs to do. Uh, and it's just so overwhelmed and toxins are such a big root cause. Like, like Wendy says, detox or die, right? <laughs> so parasite cleanse or die in, in this yeah. case. So, um, <laughs> we have options, but, uh, whatever works for you guys is, is best. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Dr. Wendy Myers. Uh, like I said, go out and do your parasite cleanse. Just try it. You want to do it at least once a year, maybe even twice a year is a good idea to do this on a regular basis. So go check that out, that offer out at dianekazer.com slash Myers Detox Supplements. Use code Myers Detox 10, M-Y-E-R-S. So thanks for tuning in. And, uh, you know, again, I, I want to, you know, thank you guys for joining us and taking your precious time to listen to this show. The audience has just been growing exponentially over the past few months. So I don't know what's going on, but it's just, I don't know, it just doubled in uh, the audience size. And uh, I just really appreciate you guys uh, taking the time to tune in. It's just really a, a pleasure 
to be able to bring you guys all this information, world-class experts uh, talking to you about how to improve your health and, and upgrade your health because you deserve to feel good. And that's my goal with the show is to help you on your health journey. So thanks for tuning in. I'm Wendy Myers. Talk to you guys next week. The Myers Detox Podcast is created and hosted by Wendy Myers. This podcast is for information purposes only. Statements and views expressed on this podcast are not medical advice. This podcast, including Wendy Myers and the producers, disclaim responsibility for any possible adverse effects from the use of information contained herein. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. This podcast does not make any representations or warranties about guest qualifications or credibility. Individuals on this podcast may have direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to herein. If you think you have a medical problem, consult a licensed physician.